me again we are back with another behind the scenes cake life vlog again another week another wedding cake i do love wedding cake season this week i have a little bit of a scary one and the reason i say that is because it is a pillow cake so the cakes are shaped as pillows and stacked in three tiers now it's not as if this is a really difficult shape to carve but my cakes are really nice and soft i love a good soft sponge and pillows obviously they're gravity defying on all the corners where they go up before they go back in so i am a little bit scared this week i have one bowl of ganache ready to go and these are just two of the cake well two of the six cakes i have two of this size two of this size and two of an even bigger size but i've just been cutting out the foam core platforms so this is my idea here so we've got an eight inch square they actually only requested a seven inch so they wanted five seven nine but the only tins i have or six, eight, ten. So a square one, so I don't make square very often. So I've had to bake them bigger. And I've cut these boards one and a half inches smaller than the size. So this will be the base, and then you'll see how much I have to kind of carve off, sloping downwards for the pillow, and then they slope back in as well. So these are all ready to go, but I am dreading it a little bit. I have my cup of tea ready and the next thing to do is make the fillings. Also, I forgot to say, I've got a new mat. So this one is actually my old one and it's placed over this side near my mixer because this is where I tort the cakes and add the sugar syrup and then I ganache here on the side. So this is usually full of ganache. But this is my new mat which is exactly the same brand. It's the same colour that I used to have. If you've watched a few of these vlogs, you'll see a while ago, um, it got warm in the car. It was like stood up. We were transporting it um, and it got left in the car on a hot day. The heat actually warps these mats and it was really bent. And a few of you suggested heating it back up and flattening it. I tried it and it didn't work i heated the whole thing with a hair dryer i put two big wooden chopping boards on it and the microwave to try and flatten it and i tried it a couple of times and it just was not working it just had big humps in it and when i need this for rolling out nice and smooth and nice and flat you can't have big humps in your <laughs> cutting mat i of course have stained it already i've only had it maybe a couple of weeks and it's already stained but this is the one i roll out on now and cut with my scalpels it doesn't mark the worktop and the other one over there is where i cut and trim the cake so that also needs protection against the the knife cutting around the cakes on the worktop so I'll leave this linked below if you're interested because I buy A3 ones and this is probably like the fourth mat I've had now. <laughs> they would usually last a long time if you don't put like excessive heat on them or leave them in the boot of the car on a hot day. <laughs>
is now Friday morning. I have just walked in and this is where I left it yesterday. It took me a full day to stack it, apply all the different laces, paint, the trims, the tassels, the board and painting everything gold. <laughs> so now it's a complete finished base and all that is required today is the figures. So the figures are obviously the bride and groom and they also have two cats that they want on there and cats and tassels go together very well. <laughs> so we're going to have one of the cats playing with the tassels and they wanted the other cat kind of stretching up towards them. So that's what we're working on today. I have a whole day ahead of me till about half past three so I should be able to get this finished. And then on Saturday we are delivering this to Salmsbury Hall. So I have been here a few times. At least it's not too far away. We actually stayed at Salisbury Hall in one of their shepherd's huts right near the beginning of my vlogging journey. The kids were a lot younger then. It's crazy just to think how many years I've been doing this. It's a bit weird. And then I'm going to a brigadier's house after that. So I did have this scheduled in a few weeks ago and we had to cancel and rearrange. So I'm going to visit Brigadier Kim and I'm going to be filming because she owns like a glow forge silhouette machines edible printers thing like that so she's going to do a whole kind of pros and cons of each machine and why she likes the machines that she's got what they can do um and this is a brigadier exclusive video tutorial for the cherry plus members so if you are a cherry plus that will be coming your way soon so that's what we're getting up to at the weekend and then sunday we're up early again and out the door because i've decided to book us onto a walk I have not done one of these walks before where you pay to enter and it's a fixed route. We do one every single year and we've always missed out because we've always been doing something and we would have missed out this year had they not moved the date. So this walk was supposed to be a few weeks ago when we were delivering a cake so we couldn't do it. But because of the forecast lightnings and storms and thunder, they rescheduled it to this weekend on a Sunday and this one we can actually do. I don't know how we're gonna go because it is a five to seven hour walk and we have not done anything like this before. We are not like fit walkers. We do the odd walk now and again, but nothing like this. So yes, it's gonna be packed lunches, couple of different options for footwear and just see if we can get it done. I'm just working on Gary's hand. <laughs> Gary is the groom. Um, I've obviously got pictures of the bride and groom and honestly, the bride is absolutely adorable. She's so smiley. So I can't wait to do her face. But I tend to do all the torsos first and the heads and hair last. So I'm just gonna do a quick hand. I tend to flatten it into like an oval and cut out the thumb first. Take out this piece and then chop this into fingers. And then it's just a case of rolling it between your fingers to soften those cut edges because they're like little rectangles. You're just kind of following your own hands really. It's like you can see your middle finger is longer than the rest, then you've got two at the side and your little finger is obviously a lot smaller. So this is the middle finger here, so we're just going to twist and make that the longest. And then when we put that one back by the side, you can see it's shorter. So all you're doing is mimicking your own hand, really. And then the, the little finger, you can nip a little bit off the end, just in case it's too long. So we have our finger length. And now you can see we've got a big chubby area down here so we want to roll in a wrist so your thumb kind of goes down and then it instantly turns into a wrist down here so we've got our thumb we come down and we're going to nip it right there between the fingers and start rolling it and you can see it's changed the shape drastically already into a little hand and another thing to note with your own hand is that your thumb is actually lower down. So all your fingers are up here and you, your thumb in a relaxed state is usually lower. So you can do that with your models by pushing this thumb bit down. I don't want it quite as pointy as that, so we'll just nip a bit more off. And 
but you can push your thumb lower down as well. Until you have something a little bit like that. Now I've just chopped that excess wrist down into this little hand and I want to place it roughly there and curl his fingers to the contours of the cake. This is the number one. I know you always, I always say this in these sorts of videos when I'm modeling anything, but this is the exact reason I model directly onto the cakes is because I can add this hand create movement it looks like he's really sitting there if i made this in advance and went to place him on then this hand wouldn't be touching the cake it would kind of be just floating in midair and it just doesn't look natural um, and it's also the reason i don't sell my toppers directly on their own i get a lot of messages can you make me a topper for this can i just buy the toppers and no <laughs> it's because i make them directly on the cakes like this so that they're nice and solid and they have lots of movement and interact with the cake. So now he just needs his arm. So this is just a sausage of paste. I'm gonna indent in the middle there so he has the option to have a little bend in it. I'm just gonna wet the top and the hand to stick this sausage. So I'll place it on the hand first, like that. And then I will attach the shoulder area like that and I build them in stages so I'm not going to do his other arm yet because I want his arm to go round his bride I just think it's really cute when they're like close together that the groom's got his arm around her which is another reason why I build them in stages on the cake rather than just doing this arm and then the other arm I will add a few of more of her details first that I won't be able to get in once his arm is on. So like that her inner arm needs to go in before his will go around it. So there is method in the madness. Right, so that's all arms on now. Um, I did, the, the last thing I put on was his arm and his hand, just holding her shoulder here. So obviously her, sh her arm had to go on and the inner arm here in order for then, oh, for then this to wrap around all of that over the top. So it's getting all the elements on that are kind of on the inside to then put the stuff on the outside, if that makes sense. So now I've just got little um, acupuncture needles here holding his shoes into place while it dries because they leave less large holes and I kind of put them up at an angle so you can't really see the hole. Um, so once these are set, I can remove these. But it's almost dinner time now and I've decided to stop here because I like to let the necks set up a little bit before I place the heads on because when you're messing with heads and squeezing them down the sticks um, if they're quite heavy they can make the neck shrink and squash so because it's almost dinner time I'm going to leave these now whilst I have my dinner once I come back they should have set up just enough to then put the heads on it's now 3 p.m. and it's all done. Um, you'll have to excuse the bit of sponge here. So I have this bit of sponge anchored into the cake with an acupuncture needle just to hold the cat's tail up while it dries. This is a good way to add movement. Usually I will try to anchor everything to the cake so this cat's tail is curled up on the pillow here. But because this one is stretching up and I didn't want the tail kind of just dangling down or curled onto the cake, to add a little bit of movement I wanted it to curl outwards and the way to do that is to support it with a sponge until it's dry. So this is going to stay in here all night. It should be nice and easy to remove tomorrow before delivery. But just look at this bride and groom. I mean, how blooming adorable. She is so smiley in her pictures. I just love the colour of her sari. She went for like this burgundy deep red colour. And yeah, I'm just gonna let this all set now. Here is the other little naughty kitty. He's kind of looking like, what do you mean I can't play with the tassel? How dare you tell me off? So this little kitty down here is called Queenie and she has like a white neck. And then a much darker one up here is Luna. He wanted kind of stretching up towards them. 
So yeah, I just love the colours of this cake. Nice, bright, joyous colours. Um, so I'll probably see you again for the delivery tomorrow. Set up at Sam Ripley Hall went fine. It was placed on a piano in a circular area. It's always pretty dark because the light comes from behind, so it's hard to get a good photo or a good footage just due to where the lighting is. But, but I saw the florists. I have seen those girls before. They're called Flower Girls of Warley. And I remember meeting them on one of a, like a naked wedding cake setup I was doing quite a long time ago. So it was nice to see them doing their work, putting lots of greenery in. And then I went off to Kim's and we created such in-depth videos. She went through her edible printing machine, the edible printer she's got, why she chose the one she has, what other ones she's had in the past, what she prefers, pros, cons, what to look out for. That in itself is like a 30 minute video to watch and also which icing sheet she likes, why not to use the cheaper ones. All about the inks and the food safety of it. Next section was on cutting machines. Um, she has some silhouette machines. She's also owned Cricut. And again, this isn't a good 30 minute video of why she chose silhouette over Cricut and why she thinks it's better, which machines she has, because there's different types and why she chose those particular machines in terms of what might be good for people doing card and crafts versus people doing more edible items. And then the last one is an hour long, it's an hour long video on her laser cutting machine. So that's like next level um, expensive machine, told us what it costs, what you have to do, what you have to think of before buying one. Um, I have edited them all, they're all ready to go. And the first one's going up in July. And like I said, it is for Cherry Plus members only. So you can join the brigade at £3.50, but to be a Cherry Plus member, that's £9. But that gets you all the extras and all these exclusive videos that are coming. You may have noticed my background, um, I'll just explain. Looking very bare because we're not quite finished yet. My hair is full of plaster dust. Um, you can see it is now pink. I no longer have pink patches on the wall. I have a whole pink wall. That's what we've been working on for the past week. And I just need to change a few of the decor items because the aesthetics changed a little bit from pink to pink and yellow. And a few of the items that we had were grey, we're thinking about changing. So I've got nothing up here yet. My clock is down here. So it's going to take me a little while to put everything back together. But plaster dust in your hair is so hard to get out. You add water to the powder and it instantly turns into plaster. <laughs> it's like emptying a full can of dry shampoo into your hair. You can't get your fingers through it. It needs another couple of washes. Um, but I thought I'd update you up on the walk as well because I did say we were booked onto a walk. We managed it, we finished it, we got a free slice of pie at the end of it and a certificate. It was super tough, it was six hours. Um, some of it was like a slow incline. It was also a super hot day. We didn't realise we'd actually got sunburnt until we got home. All my neck was sunburnt and our arms and we started peeling on our hands and everything. Um, it was just unexpectedly warm that day. But we are super glad we did it. We could not walk the next day. Limbs, muscles, legs were knackered. And then when doing this living room and up on the ceiling, scraping wallpaper down, trying to plaster it. Six days, I struggle to kind of get my arms any higher than this. They start to hurt, which is another reason why I can't wash my hair properly. But we're done. We're on decor now, which should be good. That's my favourite bit, is putting all the decor in. So I'll show you the living room when it's finished. But there'll be a little gap on YouTube now. This was the last vlog to schedule to put up and I don't have a vlog for after this yet. However, I am back to baking again next week where we are creating a tutu wedding cake and a handbag and crock cake. So expect that to land on YouTube sometime in the future. But thank you very much for watching and sticking with me. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you again in the next one.